If you have wanted to run GPT-4 all on your local machine, this tutorial is going to teach you exactly the same. If you have got a CPU, then you can run GPT-4 all, which is a chat GPT equivalent model just on your local machine with some optimizations. The first thing that you need to know is that GPT-4 all is a very large, or I should say large language model that has been trained with the Llama, which is the unreleased released model from Facebook. So that model has been fine tuned with more than 800,000 GPT 3.5, which is chat GPT generations. And that has been used to create this new model called GPT for all. Since the repository or the open source application GPT for all has come out, there have been a lot of developments to make it easier for people to run. And one of the easiest way that you can run GPT for all is using Pi Llama CPP. So Pi Llama CPP is a very small Python library that is to help you run anything related to Llama CPP. So if you are familiar with Llama CPP, so this is a, an initiative or an open source project from a very popular person, Georgi Jernov. So this also has become like the de facto library of everybody to go to to see how an open source library can spike up. So this is Llama's port to CPP, C++, yes, C++, not Python. And now we have a way to leverage Pi Llama CPP to also run GPT for all. I think I've bored you with enough content at this point. So I'm going to directly take you to my Google Colab environment and then show you how to run this Pi Llama CPP and GPT for all model. The only catch here is that when I tried this on April 8th, when I tried this on my MacBook, it actually crashed or my MacBook got a sick fault error. And uh, that's why I'm not showing it on the local machine. So I would strongly encourage you to try this out. But if you have a Mac, there is a chance that you might get a sick fault error. But if you are not worried about those things, do not think about any of those things. This Google Colab notebook will be linked in the YouTube description. So all you have to do is go to the description, click the Google Colab notebook and then start running it. This code is optimized only for CPU, not GPU. That's why I have not enabled GPU in the Google Colab notebook. The first step is for us to install pip install hugging face underscore hub and pi llama cpp. Hugging face underscore hub is going to help us download a model from hugging face model hub and pi llama cpp is going to be the library that we're going to use to run GPT for all. Once you have successfully installed these two libraries, the next thing is we need to from hugging face underscore hub import h underscore hub underscore download and from pi llama pi llama cpp dot model import model after this that you have imported all the required libraries now is the main part how do you download the required model and for that there is a very kind soul that has actually helped me in this thing so i would like to give a very quick shout out to luke so there is a new format that has been changed in Llama CPP. So previously they had GGML. Now I think it's called GGJT. So Luke has converted this model to GGJT and then uploaded it on Hugging Face Model Hub. So a big thank you to Lucas Crucial for making this model available to us on Hugging Face Model Hub. So it's easier for us to start using it. So you can go here and then start using it if you want to use it for a different purpose. I link this model repository also in the YouTube description. So now at this point, we know where the model is. So all we have to do is download the model HF underscore hub underscore download and give the repository ID repo ID and then say what is the file name that you want to download and where do you want to download. So all we are saying is that we want to download the model in the local repository like our local directory as you can see here and we are saying that what is the model name. You have a different way to download also using git clone. So if you're familiar with git clone, you can actually avoid this dependency and then use git clone as well. Now at this point, just make sure that the model has been successfully downloaded. How do you make sure? Go to the folder, the current folder. If you're running this on your local machine, go to your current local machine, uh, current folder. Or if you're running this on Google Colab, click the folder icon and then see if the model has been downloaded. After the model has been downloaded, you would have a file name called ggjt model.bin. 
Now all you have to do is load the model. You have already imported model with uppercase M and you have to now use that to load the model. The model is available here. You can give the context length, like what is the context length that you want and then load the model. After you load the model, you need to just say what is the prompt. The prompt could be something that looks like this. So what is the user saying and what is the bot saying? If you are ever, you know, trying to build a chatbot using this, I've got a separate tutorial about how to build a chatbot with historical memory using uh, the GPT 3.5 API. So you can literally use this code with that existing tutorial and then build a chatbot web interface also. So now the user is sending this message. So I'm going to say, tell me five places to eat in Bangalore and the bot is going to reply me something. So this is the prompt that I've generated and you can generate this message using this and how much is the number of output characters that you want to generate. And then the result is stored in this result object and then finally you have to print the result. So I'm going to show you how much time it takes. So for example, instead of printing, predicting 50, we can, pre instead of predicting 200, we can predict only 50. So I can say, write a joke on Elon Musk. I think this is becoming one of my favorite prompts. In fact, one of my subscribers said, don't spend too much time being obsessed with Elon Musk. I'm honestly not obsessed with Elon Musk, but I would like to see how different language models respond to this question whenever I ask this question. So now we are running this on a CPU which is which has like um, 12, 12, 13, 13 GB RAM. So it's not like one of the most sophisticated CPUs that you can get. Like right now my CPU, my local machine has got 32 gig RAM. So you can see that on a 12 gig RAM machine or approximately 13 gig RAM machine, I'm running this at uh, real time. I'm not going to edit this. And then the prompt that I've given is write a joke on Elon Musk. Once this is done completely, the next thing that we can do is we can print the result and see what is going to happen. While this is running, I would like to quickly take you to two different repositories so that it is important for you to understand what is happening here. If you want to do the model conversion by yourself, let's say you don't want to use the model that Luke has given, you want to do the model conversion yourself, go to the Llama CPP repository and then search for GPT-4 all. So when you go to GPT-4 all, you can actually see step by step instructions on how to use the helper scripts that are given to you. The first script is called convert GPT-4 all to ggml.py. And then the second script is called migrate ggml 2023-0330-pr613.py. You can use these two scripts to actually generate the final model that we are using. So if you do not want to use the model Luke has given, or if you want to use a different model and convert them, you can, all you have to do is go to this repository called llama.cpp, which I'll also link it in the YouTube description, and then use these two helper scripts and then convert the model about uh, less than a minute for me when I try to predict five. User says, write a joke on Elon Musk and the bot says, here is a joke about Elon Musk. Elon Musk is like a catfish. He has scales, fins and claws. I don't know how is the joke, but it, it actually made me laugh. So I can ask one more question just to see the same time. So the user, I can go and ask, write a joke on Elon Musk and space X. And I can send the same message and you can see that the model has started generating. As part of the model, you can also give the number of threads and also if you want, you can have a callback so that you know you have the streaming output. So right now we are using this option which, without a callback like this, where we have ge we generate a text and then we print it. But if you want to have like a callback where you know you want to see like a streaming text, then you can use a callback like this and then you can use that as also part of your model dot generate. So that will have that image how people are usually used to with chat GPT. It took about 46 seconds and I can print the result at this point and uh, write a joke on Elon Musk and SpaceX. The bot says, here is a joke on Elon Musk and SpaceX. Elon Musk has just launched his new rocket, SpaceX into outer space as it soars upwards, he notices that the rocket is. Okay, the joke is not complete probably because you know we have, uh, we have limited it to 50 tokens, but the point here is that this is a model that has been tested by a lot of people and you can run this model quite easily on your own CPU within just a few lines of Python code, thanks to PyLama CPP and also Luke uh, sharing the model with this. 
I'll link all the required code, including the Google Colab notebook in the YouTube description so that you can right away get started. If you were to run this on your local machine, you can run, you can download this Google Colab notebook as a Python file. You can go to the file and then you can say download the file as download.py and then you can run it or you can literally download the model from the Hugging Face Model Hub and copy the PyLama code and you can start installing the two, lang two, two libraries and then run the code here. So there are different ways to run it. The one of the easiest way that I said is use Google Colab and run it. But in this case, you have to download the model every time. So it's, it's probably easier for you to set this up on your local machine. I hope this video tutorial was helpful to you in running GPT for all, all on your local machine. If you have any question, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.